Hello everybody, it is your Peacekeeper coming at you with the next video in our How to Play series for the Royal Navy Cruiser Lines. This is the Weymouth class of light cruiser, the Tier 2 for the Royal Navy Cruisers. And before we get to talk about the ship, I just want to apologize for the last week and the lack of videos. I was only able to get the two videos out. I kind of screwed up and didn't get enough content created for last week, so... Hopefully we won't run into that problem again, but thanks for bearing with me. All right, on to the Weymouth class. The Weymouth class was ordered under the 1909 to 1910 program, as the British call it, and was built in 1910. The Weymouth class is a subclass of the town class light cruisers, not to be confused with the town class of light cruisers that also are heavy cruisers. There's another town class of Royal Navy cruiser somewhere in there. Not to be confused with them. And to add insult to injury, she was actually a product-improved Bristol class of town-class cruisers. So she was a subclass of a subclass of a regular class of light cruisers. So that kind of hurts my head a little bit. But basically, the only differences between her and the Bristols and the town-class light cruisers was that she featured a much heavier armament than them. She had more of these six inch guns that will come to define the Royal Navy cruiser line in this game. That is really the biggest difference. All of the town class cruisers were what they called a protected cruiser, which we'll go ahead and show that. Basically, it's a glorified turtleback armor scheme. The only difference between this really and a turtle back is that a true turtle back armor scheme also has belt armor, whereas the protected cruiser class uh, armor layout does not, and relies entirely on this slope bit of armor here to protect it. If you were to go and look at, say, oops, wrong one. If you were to go and look at, say, uh, St. Louis class of cruiser, you'll see a very similar arrangement, but if you go and then compare it to, say, you know, a Hindenburg or some or so, there's no armor plating on the side of a Weymouth, whereas on a Hindenburg there is. So that's really what differentiates a, a true turtleback armor scheme with the protected cruiser design. It's very similar in its in its construction and operation. In terms of ships made, there were four of them the Weymouth, Yarmouth, Falmouth, and Dartmouth. It's a lot of myths or mouths, depending on how you want to say that. All of them served throughout World War I without really any major incident. Uh, Weymouth herself was torpedoed by the German U-boat U-28, did not sink her, and she was able to get repaired and survive the war. She was later sold for scrap in 1928. Weymouth herself played a critical role in the trapping of the SMS Königsberg, not to be confused with the Königsberg-class cruisers in this game. Uh, they trapped her in the Rufiji River until she was sunk. And that's really the, the Weymouth's claim to fame. In terms of in-game gameplay style, well, it's a relatively short yet mildly painful grind to the Caledon. And the reason for that is she kind of sits in this really weird spot because the Caledon has torpedoes and a heel. The... Black Swan has rate of fire and turret traverse and maneuverability and relative speed, and this kind of has, like, none of that. <laughs> so you don't get the heel, you don't get the torpedoes, and that really, it, it forces this ship into a certain play style, and it's not a, I don't think it's a fun play style. So for me, that's why it's kind of awkward. She continues the tradition, if you can call it that, of, sh of shooting AP only. And, well, while the AP does have some favorable bounce angles and penetrations, it starts to come up to be a problem when you face off against enemy battleships. And if they're not broadside to you, and if you're not just absolutely Johnny on the spot with hitting the superstructure, you're doing no damage. Ever. At all. They just break on impact. And that's really the downside to this. However, when it comes to killing cruisers, whew, if they show a broadside to you, man, do they get deleted. In fact, the battle video, it's not a huge damage video, but it shows exactly how this ship gets played. Uh, you'll see that. You'll see the, uh, I think it's a Tenru, get just smoked because he's sailing broadside and refuses to turn. That's his fault, not mine. 
So with that, you know, she plays like a kiting type of ship. She really, once you get engaged with the ships, the, the ship that you're trying to target, you know, your best bet is to turn tail and shoot while you're running away and turn use your stealth to turn around and re-engage. And you, you have to keep ships at arm's length because you don't have enough armor on the ship to actually tank any damage. And, in fact, if you look at the armor layout, you know, her, her front armor is only 6 millimeters. That ain't stopping anything. So, well, I guess it's stopping the water from coming in, but that's about it. So with that, you know, you, you don't get to take a whole lot of damage because she doesn't have the ability to do that. She does have a fairly decent amount of hit points, though, and that kind of helps her out some. And I, like I said, you know, it. thankfully the good part about it is she faces similarly equipped armored cruisers, and because of that, you know, her AP hits really hard when it does hit. And she doesn't feel like she's at a complete disadvantage. It's just a play style that I don't particularly engage. It's a play, or enjoy. It's a play style that the low tier German cruisers kind of fall into. And I just, I, I prefer to be a little bit more aggressive than that, which is why I really prefer going later on down the cruiser line. All right, let's go ahead and cover the stats on these. Like I said, she does have a fairly decent amount of hit points, 20,300. It says there's 51 millimeters of armor. Remember, that's only in the protected portion, which is only over the boilers, basically, for the propulsion system. It's not over any of the magazines. They're, you know, the, these turrets are all open turrets, so the magazines probably aren't pretty very well armored. Uh, main batteries, she's got eight six-inch guns. They are in an interesting configuration. You've got one on the bow and stern of the ship that can fire on both sides, and then you've got three on each side that are specific to that side. So your maximum broadside will only ever be four rounds. Correction, five rounds. It'll only ever be five rounds. You can get four rounds in. If, if it's safe, you can get that fifth one in. The turret arc on that last on the, the back turret or the front turret if you're going away from your target. It, they're very limited in their angles. It's not too bad, but, you know, you're exposing a lot of your broadside to ships there, and if you're not paying attention, you can take a lot of damage really quick in these ships just from a well-placed AP salvo from an enemy. The main battery does have a firing range of 10.7 kilometers. She does have AA guns, although at this tier she'll never see any aircraft carriers, so we won't go into depth about them. Her maximum speed is... I'm going to have to take off the signal flag because it's on there. should be 25, 26 knots. So her top speed is 26 knots. She has a 500 meter turning circle and a rudder shift time of 5.9 seconds. Her detectability by C, detectability range by C is 10 kilometers, and her detectability range by air is 5.3. And the air not really mattering so much because, well, she's not going to see any aircraft carrier. At least she shouldn't. I guess it's entirely possible if you were to tear up with a tier three and get pulled into a tier four match, but that'd be very rare. And. Upgrades. Well, there's only one to choose from, and of them, main armor at mods 1 is definitely where you want to go. That's going to reduce the chance of your main battery becoming incapacitated, it's going to increase its survivability by 50%, and it's going to reduce the time it takes to repair them. It does some stuff with torpedo tubes too, but you don't have any of those. You know, these auxiliaries, you don't really have any auxiliaries, and these ships don't have a detonation problem. So, no reason to take the detonation reduction. So, anyway, that's the way, Myth. Let's go ahead and let's jump feet first into that battle video. Okay, so this battle is actually going to be a Tier 2, Tier 3 fight. It's predominantly a Tier 3 fight. There is a couple of Tier 2s thrown in there. Me and Away Myth, Novik on our team, and then there is a Chester and a Storzevoy on theirs. And it is on Polar, which is actually a really good map for the Royal Navy Cruisers. There's a lot of cover on this map for them to hide. And I don't mean hide in, like, the, the chicken sense where you stay in the back and don't do anything aside from, you know, snipe, I guess. No, it gives you plenty of opportunity to ambush your prey and get close to them while also providing you enough cover to get away from the engagement. And that's, that's really what this 
this video is actually really strong at showing. I think the damage was like 42,000 or something like that. Not a huge game. I mean, I guess that's double the server average in the ship, which is like 17,000. But, you know, eh, not exactly my cup of tea. So, you know, at these tiers, it really doesn't matter what which one we choose, which uh, cap point we choose. So I'm going to help our DD over here at A, at least initially until he can figure out how the battle is kind of developing. For the most part, our team is going to go towards BC. Certainly all of our battleships, both of them, go to BC. And it kind of keeps them out of the, the game for a long time. Unfortunately, it's an Asao and a South Carolina, and that doesn't really help. And we are already detected. Not that that's a terribly huge surprise. All right, first caller of the day. It's a Tenryu. So if you're not familiar with Tenryu... This, well, this is part of the reason why this line of ships is particularly well suited for the experienced player. The Tenryu has a very, very soft side. And you can see just how quickly we're going to chew him up here because he's not wanting to turn. Also, they've got a Wix here in range. We're, we want to get away from him as soon as possible. Oop, there's two Citadels and another, well, a lot of damage taken off of him. We're going to put the Silent between us and the Wix. Missed that salvo. Oh, the Wicks took out our Wakatake. So now he is really close. And, well, we got one parting citadel on that, that Tenryu. But we need to address this Wicks here. So one of the things that this ship is really lacking is the turret traverse department. And unfortunately, it will turn faster than its turrets can traverse. That is a huge downside. No matter what anybody tells you, that is a huge downside. The other thing is you'll notice that that Wix, he slowed down when he was broadside to us. Now you can see the torpedo indicator popped up. You gotta learn to anticipate those kinds of maneuvers from destroyers. It's especially important in battleships, but it helps in every single class. And really, you know, that's gonna come to play here multiple times, so... That, that really is an important skill to learn. If you've not picked up that skill yet, you know, that's part of the reason why I said that this line is really for the more advanced cruiser player. Really the more advanced player overall, because it requires an insane amount of attention to detail when it comes to, you know, not being broadside to targets that can shoot at you, finding targets that are broadside to you that you can hit and do a lot of damage to, while also impacting the flow of the game. Alright, so we got a Tenryu coming out around the corner there. We're going to go ahead and launch some AP at him. We weren't able to take out that Wix, and we're not going to be able to hit this Tenryu. Yep, he turned away at the last moment. So we're going to go back to trying to engage this Wix and see if maybe we can't kill him. Now that Nassau, you'll see, if you were paying attention, you saw that he was thoroughly engrossed in another ship on the other side of the map. So he's not focused at us. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to see if I can't take advantage of that and take out this Wix. You know, the Wix, he's, he, he ends up making some fatal mistakes here. One, he turns broadside. These ships, the short fuse timers on them, allow the, uh, the shells to do quite a lot of damage. You get a lot more normal pens than you do over pens. So one other thing when it comes to hunting down DDs is anticipate their torpedo launches. If you remember, I told you to that about the the other torpedoes and how to how we needed to pay attention to them. Well, there's the there's a reason why. And having played a lot of DDs, especially US DDs, I'm very familiar with how that class launches its torpedoes, where the torpedoes are at, how many per side. All of those things come to make playing this ship a lot easier and a lot safer. There are those among you that are struggling with that still, and, and uh, again, you got to know that. But one of the best ways to mitigate the abilities of a destroyer to hit you with torpedoes is when you see him go broadside there for a while, you know, hang off on, on jamming the rudder over just a little bit and then do it. Because you're going to get him to launch those at that marker. He's going to go, yes, I'm going to hit him. It's going to be amazing. And then you're going to turn and he's going to be like, crap, they all missed. Now what? Well, in his case, he died. So, 
You know, that that's the kind of advantage that you get from having a lot of experience in playing these ships. So here we are. We're going to assist in capping B. Use your ship's maneuverability to really take advantage of the, the shell travel... The shell flight time on the ships that are shooting at you. And then make sure to use the cover to your advantage. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to disengage from this as much as we possibly can, especially since we just capped B. Teams are pretty even. They've lost both of their destroyers. We've lost our destroyer and two cruisers. They've got the firepower advantage over us at this point. Now, I was really hoping that he would just keep coming out of there, but... Uh not only did I shoot too high, but I overshot, so that's okay. You know, you, you live and learn. He's playing the, the tank business. I call it BS, but whatever. <laughs> if it works for them, I mean, obviously it worked there. Can't fault them too much. We'll throw it off on the other side then. Maybe we'll get a lucky hit there. Nope. Well, he's done playing the World of Tanks thing, and, well, now he's going to pay for it. Or not! We're gonna go ahead and bounce these shells off of him. I don't know how, but we did. Okay, let's try it again! Alright, there we go. We even got a citadel with it. So now we've got another, you know, target off in the distance here that is thoroughly distracted, and that's this Kohlberg. We've got the support of two battleships, so there's no reason not to go ahead and push our advantage. Their battleship, the Kawachi there, is pushing hard just south of B. He's got an island between him and I. Nothing to complain about there. There's the Tenryu. He launched some torpedoes. You can see that we're not doing a huge amount of damage per shell hitting. But, you know, it does start to add up after a while. There's a pretty good hit. And here's where you really need to use the mobility advantage against those high rate of fire, high angle guns on the German light cruisers at the very beginning of the, the German cruiser tree. And you can see how, you know, he's not switching to AP, he's continuing to use HE. We're still taking a fairly large amount of damage, but we got an island here to kind of calm and smooth things down. And we're going to go ahead and keep trying to cap C. It looks like the Kohlberg is going to continue on through here to be punished by our battleships. Nope, no, he is turning away. So we'll go ahead and we'll take a parting salvo at him here. Okay, he's got 200 hit points left. Can we get him with this salvo? Hail Mary! Shots out! Will we? One of them snuck over and we got him. All right. Yep, I agree. That was a pretty good shot. It was nice and lucky, is what it was. And there was a shot at their Miyogi. You can see it did no damage. The shell broke on impact. That is a common problem when shooting at battleships with these low-tier guns. That was me not paying attention to his the smoke on his smokestacks. So one other thing to do and take advantage of is you can see his smokestacks. You can see which direction the smoke is going. Whichever way it is, you know, the tops of it are getting blown towards, he's going the opposite direction. So it's being blown to the right, he's moving to the left. He beached himself, and now we're going to go ahead and take some pot shots at him going the other way. The Chester is another protective class cruiser. You will not be able to citadel him at any range with the, with the Weymouth. So it, it's, it, it, it's always a bit of a... a you know, a gamble to try and engage one. He's got a pretty healthy amount of armor, but that plays against him. So we're going to take advantage of a little brief gap here. We're going to shoot. We want to make sure that we're maneuvering, so throw off any of his shots. He didn't take any. 2,700 damage in that one salvo. You can see how I'm using the cover, though. This is, a, this is actually a tactic that you will need to master to effectively play Royal Navy cruisers. There simply is no other way to play them. They, they don't have the durability and the hit points to tank any damage at all. And once you get up in the tiers, they will start to sort of be able to bounce shells, but, you know, it's not something that they're real strong at. So the, the more you can master this ability to play in the islands and, and basically treat it like a destroyer, the better. Unfortunately, Mr. Chester's going to run behind an island here, and, well, so are we. 
We're going to go ahead and take advantage of that. <laughs> Our BBs are complaining about how slow their ships are. Don't worry, Mr. South Carolina. It doesn't get any better until Tier 8. <laughs> the South Carolina is all of, like, three knots slower than the rest of the U.S. standards fully upgraded. Yup. Again, one shell hit. It broke on contact. Not exactly an inspiring way to start off a fight up against a battleship. Now, if I were in any other battleship, well, I'd just load HE and lol, you know, light them on fire. <clears throat> and this is a Kawachi. I think I said Miyogi earlier. I meant Kawachi. And 924, that hit the bridge structure there. So the Chester's coming back out to play. We're going to go ahead and we are going to take advantage of this nice little island cover here. While we go ahead and engage the Chester. And my hope here is that the other battleships will be able to finish off this Kawachi before it finishes me off. Gets a couple lucky hits in. Now, <laughs> I'm taking advantage of him because uh, he doesn't have exactly the world's best accuracy either, so... Unfortunately, the Chester manages to make it through that little gap. We did get a couple hits on him, though. Kawachi's lost interest in me? Perfect. We're going to go ahead and we're going to, well, we're going to duck through some islands again. And this is kind of the way that, you know, these low tiers especially, but it is a good viable tactic in the high tiers as well. And it's part of the finesse of really playing these ships. You know, the tier one, well, pff, it's tier one, who cares? takes like five minutes to get through a tier one fight and get enough XP to, to move on to this ship. But this is really where the where the you know rubber hits the road and where you really have to pay attention to you, the skills that you're learning and applying. Good gunnery skills, obviously not demonstrated there. Good ability to dodge incoming fire. Oh, and he's dead. Well, that was nice of them. 41,000. We're not going to set any damage records here. Not going to get cracking, but... You can see exactly what I was getting at with the play style, though. You know, once you get to the Caledon, you get the added advantage of having those torpedoes, and they're 6k torpedoes, so you can actually use them kind of somewhat offensively. There were a couple times during this match that I could have used those torpedoes to... Well, to engage enemy ships, and it would have been quite beneficial to actually have that. And fortunately, I don't, so... And we're going to go ahead and do some more damage to this Chester. Maybe even finish him off. No. Man, that's really frustrating. How many hit points? 169. Huh. Lucky. Not lucky enough. South Carolina sneaks one in. Good kill, good kill. And let's go ahead and assist in taking B. But yeah, most definitely, we're playing in the islands, and it's it's a skill that's worth learning. It's a skill worth having. It really benefits the play style of the Royal Navy cruisers going forward. You know, it seems a little contradictory. You don't have the armor profile that the other ships, you know, the other cruisers have to really engage other people. In, in fights, but yet that's where these ships really excel in the fight. And if they're not prepared for you, man, you, you can do a lot of damage and get out of dodge before it's really a problem. And there's some free promotion for the YouTube channel you guys are watching. And thank you guys, by the way, for watching. We're getting close to that thousand subscriber mark. I guess I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do for a thousand subs. Oh boy. I thought I was going to be able to sneak in through there, but no. <laughs> Sorry. Well, apparently I'm drunk. <laughs> I was completely sober, mind you, when this, when this video was made, but uh, anyway. This video here is going to end, and yeah, nope. Can't shoot over that island. If 
I was in like a Minotaur, I might have been able to or something. Those things have some pretty ridiculous shell arcs. We are going to pop around this back side of the island here and see if we can't sneak in just a little bit more damage. We're at 45,180. And not paying attention and actually looking through the scope there. That was a swing and a miss. And this is one of the more frustrating aspects of these cruisers. Once they start going nose on or, or stern on, you start losing the ability to do a lot of damage. Yeah, I did 626, but that, if, if that would have been HE, those shells would have hit, and, you know, like there. So we got one bounce and one shell broke. I mean, really? That wasn't enough to do any damage? All right, there's the end of the game. So you can see how the Weymouth plays. It's really stick to that cover. 45,805 damage, five Citadel hits, three sinks. 1,498 XP. You can see how much damage... Well, it was all done by AP. And the credits. Anyway, this has been the how to play video for the HMS Weymouth, the Tier 2 Royal Navy Cruiser. Go ahead and throw your comments down in the comments section below and let me know what you thought. And as always, like and subscribe. Thanks guys for watching.